What's going on, A-Push peeps? We've got a good one for you today. This is video number 12, Events Leading to the American Revolution. As I mentioned in the last video, this information will focus on a topic that has been asked many times on A-Push exams, especially in short answer question and essay format. So make sure you are familiar with this material. Before we begin, I want to give a huge shout out to Ms. Brown's class in Florida. Thank you for watching. Best of luck. You will do awesome this year. Let's begin by talking about British attempts to assert imperial authority, but we need to do a quick recap to fully understand this video. If you remember, after the Seven Years' War, Britain was in debt, major debt, then they needed to raise revenue. Britain wanted to seek to limit colonial expansion, so they did so by the proclamation line of 1763, which forbid colonial expansion past the Appalachian Mountains. Remember, that is the second P in PEEP. So Britain's in debt, so they're going to pass a bunch of taxes on the colonies. One of the most important taxes is the Stamp Act from 1765. This was a tax on 50 commonly used goods, such as newspapers, playing cards, marriage certificates, you name it. If it was made from paper, chances are it was taxed. And this will affect nearly everyone. And colonists are not going to be happy. They will view this as the death to their economy and to the colonies, and they will respond with the Stamp Act Congress. Now, we're going to talk about a couple of Congresses in this video. When you see Congress, I want you to think this is the colonies. Congress, colonies, Congress, colonies. When I say Congress, you say colonies. Very good. So the Stamp Act Congress was an example of colonial boycotts of the Stamp Act. The colonists would tar and feather stamp collectors. They would boycott or refuse to buy goods that had the stamp tax on it. And as I mentioned, they tarred and feathered tax collectors. Now, they did such a good job of boycotting and throwing up a stink about the, the Stamp Act that Britain will repeal the Stamp Act. And this will embolden the colonists. They will realize that if they protest, if they make a big enough stink, Britain will probably repeal taxes. So this is a good learning experience for the colonists. Two years later in 1767, we have the Townsend Act named after Charles Townsend. This was a tax on tea, lead, glass, and paint. And after colonial boycotts again, all but the tax on tea was overturned. So goodbye lead, goodbye glass, goodbye paint taxes. Tea will still remain and we'll come back to that. The Tea Act of 1773 was passed by Britain to bail out the British East India Company. This was a private company and the cost of tea from the British East India Company was actually cheaper than smuggled tea. So the colonists could buy this tea cheaper directly from the company, but they were against it because it was a tax and colonists did not have representation in Parliament. So began the very famous quote, no taxation without representation. And this will lead to, can you guess what it is? If they're protesting tea, yeah, you got it, you little genius. It's the Boston Tea Party. Same year, the Sons of Liberty, a group that was formed to protest British taxes, they dressed as natives and threw the tea into the Boston Harbor. Now, Britain is not going to take this lightly, and they will respond with the coercive or the intolerable acts. They would close the port of Boston until damages were paid, about a million dollars worth. And this led to the colonists forming. What are colonists going to form? You know it. Yep, it's a Congress. So when I say Congress, you say colonies. They are going to form the first Continental Congress. It's called the first because there will be a second. Very good. Look at you, you genius today. So they sought to redress grievances and go back to solitary neglect. It's very important to understand. Most people were not calling for independence during this time. They still wanted to remain under the control of British. They just wanted to go back to salutary neglect being left alone. So those are some major acts. And what we want to figure out is how do colonial leaders justify their resistance to the British? Well, they said we have rights as British, British subjects. And they rejected the virtual representation argument by Britain that said that, hey, Parliament is going to make laws that are in the best interest of all British subjects. But the colonists are going to say, listen, we want representation in Parliament. They also made arguments based on the right of the individual, taxation, writs of assistance. Writs of assistance were open-ended search warrants that the British would use to search cargoes of ships to make sure that taxes were being paid. Local traditions of self-rule. Remember, colonists could elect their legislatures, but not British representatives. So the Virginia House of Burgesses, for example, was elected by the colonists, at least some of them who were qualified to vote in Virginia, but there was no 
representation in Parliament for the colonists. And of course, Enlightenment ideas, the big theme we talked about from period two, the idea of consent of the governed by John Locke, that people have the right to life, liberty, and property, and they can choose their own form of government. Those ideas were very influential during this time. And here is Patrick Henry giving his very famous speech, give me liberty or give me death, when he's referring to the British actions during this time. So who took part in the independence movement? A wide range of people. You have colonial leaders, people like Ben Franklin. He argued America contributed significantly to the Seven Years of War victory and they should not be punished. He was a co-writer of the Declaration of Independence with John Adams and the most famous author, Thomas Jefferson. He helped gain support of France during the American Revolution. He was instrumental in that. Popular movements, you have the Sons and Daughters of Liberty, groups of men and women who resisted the actions of the British. They would boycott goods. And the homespun movement is making, for example, clothes in the colonies instead of buying them from Great Britain. Patriots. The, that is a term for those that were loyal to the independence movement, unlike loyalists who were loyal to Great Britain. An example of a popular woman during this time was Mercy Otis Warren. She was a writer that urged independence during the 1770s. Okay, Thomas Paine's Common Sense. Holy cow, no, this is specifically mentioned. Circle is bad boy. Right now, you need to know it. So T. Payne, he was an author. He was originally born in England, moved to the Americas. He wrote Common Sense in 1776, which is one of the most influential writings in American history. He challenged King George III, KG3, urged it was common sense to break away from the corrupt monarch. He basically wrote a pamphlet calling KG3 out and said, yeah, now what? What are you going to do about it? We're going to, we should declare independence. And he argued that a little island could not rule a larger continent. If you're following along with the Enhanced Video Guide, we're going to actually look at some excerpts from Common Sense and take a look at this reading. And this helped inspire. What do you think Common Sense helped inspire? If he's urging people to break away, you got it again. The Declaration of Independence from July of 1776. So we have Ben Franklin here, John Adams, and then 33-year-old Thomas Jefferson. I've never felt so inadequate in life. I'm 36 and I am three years older than he was when he wrote the Declaration of Independence. I kind of feel like a failure. So this was inspired by Enlightenment ideas as well as T-Pain's Common Sense. In this document, it's found that all men had natural rights and among them are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. So they changed it a little from John Locke's life, liberty, and property. America is going to formally break away from Britain in this letter. It's a famous breakup letter basically saying, you know what? It's you. It's not me. You're the problem here, King George III. So we're breaking up. And this is issued one year after fighting at Lexington and Concord began. And that's important. The war is really going on already. But it's not until one year into the war that the declaration is actually issued. That shows how many people still want to reconcile with Great Britain and avoid conflict. For the quick recap, be familiar with taxes imposed by the British. Be able to explain the Stamp Act, the Townsend Act, and the Tea Act. Colonial reactions to the British. When I say Congress, you say colonies. Very good. The very first one is the Stamp Act Congress, the Boston Tea Party. You could even throw in the First Continental Congress. Justifications for independence included the rights of individuals, enlightenment ideas, etc. Common sense encouraged America to break away, which helped influence the Declaration of Independence. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Look forward to seeing you back here for the American Revolution in the next video. Best of luck this year and have a good day.